Welcome back, welcome back everybody, this is Ranquist here bringing you episode number 30, the big 3 Oh yeah, how's everybody doing? I'm doing fantastic. Today is my first time recording on Skyblock since my honeymoon, uh, and if you'd like a recap of how my honeymoon went, um, to be short and blunt, it was awesome. Uh, please watch my latest uh, block centric episode I went into detail as to um, you know everything that kind of happened uh, as far as I can possibly say without getting in trouble <laughs> uh, you know everything went it was it was a good time so uh, today is a very special episode yes let's uh, let's talk about it real quick because one uh, boom hello hey -o. We have finished at least the first level of our mob farm. Now, I haven't decided how exactly I want to use this uh, little entrance here. Um, it works so far. You know, you get this little half slab opening. Boop, 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 boop. You can smash people in the face, and then, uh, you know, if you can't reach anything, you just open the door, come in, and then close it. Uh, so, yeah, so that's that. Uh, it is. It took so many resources, to be honest. Uh, let's uh, take a quick gander up top. Come in. Uh, as everybody remembered from the previous couple episodes, how this was built with our special guest. Uh, and then we can come up here. I've got a little, couple little bit of maintenance hallways that can kind of go down. And each one around here uh, has an opening. So we can come up and boom so I believe that my opening is actually going to be so I mean eventually I'm gonna to get to the point where I can redstone this bad boy you know and make it so that I can shut it off turn it back on um, so I believe what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this too high so or at least the next level to above it so let's just you know imagine this and then the boom the floor will go right there right right so the floor will go right here uh, and then it'll follow the same pattern and just fall right down into there so um, as you can see with one level of this we actually have four different spawning zones so um, I think you know right now we have a good amount of people look at all of them on tacos peace boy blah 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 hello everybody um, so, you know, it's kind of putting a little bit of a damper on, uh, the spawn rates, but, you know, we'll get them eventually, you know, um, a lot of times I play in this a little bit less, but sometimes, especially in the weekends, oh boy, uh, usually in the weekends there's anywhere between 50 and 60 people, so, uh, this is not, this is only part of the reason why I am very excited. E Ooh, I almost died, that could have been bad, hi. See, as you can see, and that's another thing too, uh, the spawn rates get better as I stay logged in. So like when you first log on, this thing is terrible. I mean, it's not going to do anything, uh, mostly because it's not a redstone contraption. So, um, you know, redstone ones, as soon as they spawn, they get funneled into the center. But this one, you kind of have to rely on their own walking off. Um, and you can actually see if mobs come in through that water, which is pretty sweet. So uh, what's next? Boom. This blob of stone and chests and random things um, this is a very important piece of machinery uh, if you can see we've got some storage we've got some uh, hydration we've got some stability or strength up here for blast resistance blah 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 no um, <laughs> this here is a, a waterfall um, cobble generator and I decided to do one of these because I found one of the greatest things out, and I, I've kind of known it for a while. Um, thank you, Mogswamp, uh, the famed click lock. Uh, I've known it for a while, but it never really, uh, excuse the pun, clicked as far as, you know, the amazingness of it. <laughs> What's that? The texture's broken. No, it's supposed to be like that. That's kind of funny. Um, so yeah, so click lock is absolutely astonishing, and uh, essentially there's a settings within Windows. I'm not sure if there's one in Apple. Uh, I'm sure there is, and essentially what it does, you turn it on, and then you hold down the click button for a certain amount of time, it activates it, uh, and it 
fools your computer into thinking that the mouse button is actually pressed. So no more having to bind your action key to a key in the middle of the keyboard and then put something heavy on it. No, no, no. You just activate click lock uh, and off you go. And so what is that really uh, Boris, well, if you guys follow my Twitter, you will you would have seen the message of me uh, talking about it, which I believe was a couple days ago. Um, and I haven't played too too much, but boom, hello, and uh, and boom, hello. You know, again, not much in terms of a normal person standards, but as far as Skyblock goes, the amount of time that goes. Oh wait, nope, no more. I was cooking a bit up. Uh, the amount of time that goes into farming stuff. Especially, especially, uh, stone. It's just, it's insane, right? <laughs> uh, it, it hurts sometimes to, to farm stone. But what this allows me to do is, um, I can, you know, set this up on one of my computers and come in, toggle away, and I can do something else, whether it's, you know, something around the house, something with Mrs. Ranquist or whatever. Uh, and the only thing that I have to do is just keep an eye for, uh, er, as far as changing my picks goes. Because um, what I usually use is that I'll use cobblestone because it's free, but you can use iron and all that kind of stuff depending on how much time you have and what, whatever. Um, it's not perfect, of course. It's not automatic, and I'll eventually get to that point. But uh, I think I get probably around 80% return, um, You know, which if you think of a pickaxe, uh, so let's, oh crap. F3H. There it is. So if we look at the durability of a stone axe, it's about the same. Yep, it's exactly the same as the pickaxe. Uh, so I've been, so the durability is 131, which means I would get 131 uh, back if it was 100%. Uh, I'm usually getting probably about a stack and a half to upwards of two stacks so um, even better you know <laughs> and uh, the good thing about it is in theory if I were to just do this and sell and make money uh, even on the worst possible location being the the regular market you get 50 coin per stack of cobblestone so yeah something for free that turns into quite a bit of money right so <laughs> So yeah, that's exciting. Now, of course, I'm not doing that. I'm going to use the first thing I'm going to do with this stone, um, other than, you know, throw it up in the air and dance in it. Ha ha ha. I am going to finish Brindy Lowe's church. I feel bad, Brindy Lowe. Uh, much love, much love. But um, he knows why I haven't been on here, you know, things, life. Being on the block-centric server. Um, but, you know, with this addition, this essentially makes life so much easier. Because I love working with the stone, right? Um, and essentially that takes away one of the worst farming items, stone, as far as boredom goes. Um, and it kind of streamlines it around other things. So um, so that is next to be finished. And we're going to move on from there eventually. Uh, and let's do a little recap as far as where our wheat, or not our wheat, our sugar cane goes, because I think I can actually do a sell pretty soon, yeah. So all this AFKing has gotten me quite a bit of sugar cane. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this first. No, I need you. I can get a couple emeralds, I think, um, maybe two. It's always good to, um, Kind of work on things because I still have all of my villagers. They are safe and sound, spick and span. Uh, yes, let's go. And so I just gotta find the librarian. Hi, guy. How are you? Get his emerald. And get his emerald. I don't think he's gonna do a different trade. Maybe he will. Love is in the air. Everywhere they're looking around. I want you. And he's also got books. So, two emeralds. Ooh, double hearts. 
no anyways all right all right that was quick um so yeah the trading is slow going as you can see um what I'm going to do with the rest of that sugarcane is I'm going to sell it to make some monies and I'm going to be happy. I'm going to expand ex expand the farm. Um, let me see real quick and I'll be right back where we are for time. All right, guys. So we are in luck. It's been only about 10 minutes, which is sweet. There's still so much to do. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, all right, so it's been about 10 minutes, and uh, what I'm going to do is now that I've showed you some of the progress, I am going to start working on the church a little bit more, and the, possibly when we come back, I will have some good progress to show you. Uh, so uh, until then, my friends, we'll be right back. Hey, spider! After we kill this guy. Get off of my property. Where are you spawning? Anyways, yeah. We'll be right back, guys. Bye-bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And I have not gotten too much progress in, but it has been a couple of days since I have last played. Um, actually, it's only been a day. But still, it was a very eventful day. Today was probably the scariest day, probably in any Let's Players career when you know you wake up in the morning you go to turn on your computer and nothing absolutely nothing happens oh it, that that really sucked <laughs> yeah it did <clears throat> anyways so yeah this this morning i went to log on and uh i had power going to my peripherals so things like my microphone had the led on uh, it uh, displayed power in a couple other uh, pieces, and I had power in my motherboard and whatnot. Uh, no fans, no error tones, just the uh, indicator lights. So I did a little bit of research, and of course, you know, you get kind of scared. You're like, oh no, did, was there a power surge? Did something fry? What, you know, what component do I have to replace next? Because uh, things can get rather expensive really quick. Uh, and the one thing that I learned um, was how much of a deal I actually got on my computer uh, when I purchased it a couple years ago because all of the components now, which granted things are a little bit more expensive, inflation, blah blah blah, but all the components now would have cost me probably double what I paid for the computer. Uh, yeah, so um, after doing some research, I re deduced that it was my power supply that had gone. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to do a little bit of a rant here because uh, I was just so frustrated today uh, trying to fix everything. And, you know, I know my components. I know what I put in my machine because I specifically put them in there uh, for certain reasons, right? Uh, and it, there's, oh, thank you, Rain, for stopping. Nope, you didn't stop. I just was underneath that. There's nothing worse than when you have somebody who thinks he knows a little bit more than you. You know, and granted, he was in sales, blah, blah, blah. But there's nothing worse than one of those people trying to tell you that you're wrong or telling you information that clearly is not true. Like, come on, guys. Really? I've been using this piece of machinery for the past four years. I think I know what I put inside of it. And I know there are people that don't know which is why you have to pretend that you know, but just tell me you don't really know. You know, look up, look at my component. Don't sit there and try to tell me it's something when you have no idea. No idea. Because oh, it only makes us angry. Anyways, so yeah, I walked into a chain electronics store. I will not name any names, but no, the favorite color is not blue, so it's not that one. Uh, it's actually red. Uh, yeah. Anyways, for those of you in America, you'll know who I'm talking about. And I went in there because all I was looking for, dang it, was for the associate to pull out a voltage meter so that I could test my power supply. Because I didn't want to have to go on a wild goose chase and say, oh, is it this? Is it that? No, it's this. Maybe it's that. No, I wanted to know right then and there if my power supply was dead. 
and you know again sure enough it was because I'm here recording again yay <laughs> um, so uh, he couldn't do it he didn't have the meter which is really silly in my my opinion now I don't know if he really didn't have the meter or if he just didn't feel like doing it uh, but this associate proceeded to tell me no it's not your power supply because I would be I would smell it <laughs> I would smell if your power supply died because it gives off an odor. You know, when he started talking about odors, that's when I knew. <laughs> that's when I knew I had made the uh, big mistake trying to rely on this gentleman for, you know, relatively useful advice. Because I'm a smart guy, I you know I've built my computer. I've, I've built plenty of computers in the past, so I have I have knowledge of these things. You know, for the most part, you know I tell people I know what I know and I know what I don't know. And to be honest, you know, breaking things like that I d didn't really know until now. <laughs> so anyway, guys, if you think your power supply is going, smell it. If it smells funky, then you know maybe it's going. Anyways. <laughs> away from that little rant I'm sorry so yes he didn't have the meter and that pretty much made me angry oh, oh, oh sorry one other thing to, to finish the rant he then proceeded to tell me oh well none of your computers turning on because uh, the CMOS battery is dying yeah yeah, yeah that that seems right uh, your, your CMOS battery is probably going out so you should buy this and granted you know what it was only like six dollars so that's honestly why I bought it because in the off chance that he was right yeah might as well uh, it was not the CMOS battery. Just saying. Um, anyway, so I proceeded to leave. I had a CMOS battery and some sprayed air in tow from this said retail place. Uh, and I decided to go elsewhere. Um, you know, whose favorite color is blue? You know, if you're from America, again, you'll, you'll know who I'm talking about. Now, these people were actually somewhat competent. Which is surprising. Will, will be surprising to some people, but... You know, the, this group of individuals knew what they were talking about. Um, and yeah, they pretty much confirmed what I was talking about. So, you know, the guy that I did first talked to, he didn't know what I wanted to do. But he at least worked with me. And he said, you know, let me, let's look it up. Let's look at some of these things. Uh, and he did end up finding me uh, the components I needed. And he found me the meter. Uh, and then when we tested all the pins, clearly that was it. Um, you know, that was the issue, and so we moved on from there. Now, then one of the other associates, he, he did some voodoo mumbo jumbo. I don't even really know. He, <laughs> he connected some of the pins that, um, he's technically not supposed to do. Ooh, oh, that scared the crap out of me. Uh, where he tried to quote unquote jumpstart the computer, and I was fine. He, again, proved in a different way that. You know, my they were something clearly wrong with my machine, um, but but yeah, that was that was rather interesting. So you know, relatively knowledgeable piece of or, or group of people. Um, now that's not to say that they're always going to be. Just saying, <laughs> uh, we all know our fair share of incompetent people, right? Right. Uh, let's match this. That's three in because there's a one. All right, so that's perfectly fine because one is going to be right there. Cool. All right. So uh, I have a new power supply unit. It is a Thermal Take Smart M850 watt. And you know what? I am actually surprisingly happy with it. Uh, I had a in-win commander, uh, 1200 watt max output uh, which for those of you that you know that don't 100 percent know power, uh, power supplies uh, you know one would instantly think in which I did to begin with you know when I first bought the computer uh, that you know higher wattage yeah that's always better no 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 that's not necessarily true now I did have a very good po um, power supply so um, I'm not going to knock my specific product um, but for those that don't know about them directly and just kind of think that way um, it's always good to one look to see what the certification is they do 80 plus in a bunch of different colors which what that means is um, the efficiency of 
how much power it's actually going to output close to your um, close to the actual output settings. So if it says it's a you know 850 watt output, it will at least guarantee you 80. Uh, an 80 uh, certification will guarantee you that it's going to hit 80 percent of that maximum output. And then you see all the different colors. Each one is a higher percentage after that. So I think uh, I read somewhere today that Dell recently in the past, I don't know, X amount of months came out with a uh, 80 titanium, which really means that it can produce up to 96% of the total power, it says, plus be eco-friendly <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. So... Um, so that's kind of that. And then also, as far as, yeah, 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 um, the wattage, what, back to that comment. Um, it's always good to see how it produces its power. Not, you know, physically how, but, you know, w how is it coming up with those numbers? So my 1,200 watt power supply was actually what's called a dual rail power supply, where it's got two separate power creating units. Um, and then between the two, its maximum output is 1200 watts so I have two rails which you know at that point is 600 apiece uh, now the one that I have currently is a single rail which has its benefits um, as far as being able to output more at once um, but you know there's other things now it's completely modular which I love um, I think that that's always a good thing. You can make sure your cables are on correctly. Uh, you can remove cables, just have to replace cables. It's very good, in my opinion. Some people say that I've read, well, since I've read into the power supply situation, uh, some people say that there is a increased resistance in as well as an increased chance of failure with a modular device, which makes sense because there's more separate components and more different connections that can fail. Uh, but the uh, amount of resistance and the fail, is that max? Yes. And the fail chance is very minimal. Um, it just exists, so they have to say it. Um, so yeah, so I am actually very happy with my power supply. Um, my computer seems to be running substantially better than before, which could be because I was not getting the full power anyways. Don't die. Nope. Um, so my computer was kind of lagging because of that. But just kind of skirting around Windows uh, seems to be much faster. Now we'll see. The time will tell once it actually breaks in and, um, and starts producing how it should. Um, we'll see how much of an increase in performance I get, but, um, but yes, so lesson of the day, bigger wattage isn't always better, uh, and computers suck. <laughs> uh, I hate, I honestly, you know, it's a love-hate relationship. Clearly there's a lot of love because, uh, this is what I do for fun, for my profession and, you know, my my actual paying profession and for YouTube. So, um, you know, you're going to love... Uh, I love technology, but I love to hate it too. So, so fun. <laughs> uh, hopefully, you guys can uh, learn from that experience. Yes. So, uh, so yeah, I, I unfortunately did not get a chance to uh, to work on uh, much tonight because uh, clearly I've been finagling with cables and uh, the power management. I mean, I have a really big computer. I mean, it's not. The specs aren't overwhelmingly large, but the actual case is huge, uh, and there's just a lot of wires to deal with, you know. And so I, I, I was just dealing with the the logistics of putting together the computer, making sure all the components are right, uh, making sure that the wires all clip together in the right spot, and you know nothing is touching anything, and all that fun, fun crap. <laughs> Uh, I hate it, but, you know, uh, so, yeah, it took me the better half of probably two and a half hours to do it, you know, slowly and correctly rather than just kind of rushing through. So, uh, yeah, it's now, what time is it? 1130. Actually, you know, it, it took me a better part of 
four hours. You know, I was also I was doing stuff in between as well, but um, but yeah, I'm I am very tired <laughs> to say the least. So uh, yeah, but we're gonna keep going because uh, I need to work on the Church of Brindillo. Um For too long has he been without his worshiping of something. <laughs> I don't even know what kind of religion or, you know, belief that he's going to have, but he can dictate, you know, whether it's the belief in the square gods or, you know, some sort of, I don't know, I'm just kind of making stuff up as I go right about now. You, here, ah, I made it too big. Oh, I'm being foolish. <laughs> Sorry about that. You know, again, it's late. I apologize. That is actually correct. So let's grab some more stone. Uh, I know this is kind of a... I probably should have all the stone over there. But I'm going to leave it there because it's more fun to be able to run around, right? Um, so anyway, so let's, let's go into to more details about this church and, and kind of my plans for it. Um, other than keep on saying that it's the Church of Brindillo over and over. We all know that. There's a sign outside for a reason. So, uh, what do I plan on doing? Well, I plan on um, getting a good set of pews right here. And pews are those chairs. That's what those are called. Um, which is fun. <laughs> um, so there's going to be two sets of pews. Boom, boom. And then we're going to have our altar area up here. Here. This floor pattern may change depending on how it all looks. It's got to look right if I'm actually going to keep it. So, um, so we got to make sure that that comes out uh, just how we want it. Uh, I was supposed to only go two. Um, and I think the biggest feature about the church is not necessarily going to be the inside here, but rather the the roofing structure, right? So, uh, let's get that there 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 boom cool I think we have just about all of that completed anyways so yeah the roofing structure is going to kind of what's going to tie everything together um, I'm going to have an arched roof that's going to have some um, so I'm going to have the roof but I'm also going to have the ceiling right um, so I'm going to try to make sure that I can get that and they'll, you know, maybe two tone. We'll see what it ends up being. Um, and even if there isn't a full ceiling, I'm going to have rafters that we can have a chandelier or little lights pop down, um, to light the place up because we probably shouldn't be, uh, lighting our church with candles or torches on the floor. You know, there's, there's a, a place and a time for that, you know, in certain sections, but not on the actual floor. Uh, and then from there, I'm going to work on the, um, the altar area and then also I think I want to have some sort of like um, mural here and I'll probably color it in with wool to begin with and then as I get some glass I will um, you know change it out for the stained glass to kind of give that a neat look but I think that's pretty much it for uh, the actual layout for the church you know everything else is just you know get it done <laughs> right um, so so yeah, you know, the the back of the church here, excuse me while I yawn. Whew, the back of the church isn't going to have this front area. It's only going to be um, over there. So we're going to have a little awning out, probably so this guy here uh, out in the back, because out here we are going to have our cemetery. You know, we don't have that much room to begin with. Um, there is our boundary. Uh, so we're going to have a little cemetery out there, rip for Fred. You know all that all that sad stuff um and then i think that i'm going to have a road that comes all the way out um at least on the other side uh so that people kind of get around and get through um but who knows i may i may not i may just have that kind of walled off uh for for fun so so yeah i think this is you know this is a very good start for the rest of the church right <laughs> Uh, I know it's been a couple episodes since we worked on this, um, but I feel that now that I have the mob farm, at least the first level of the mob farm completed, 
um, that I can kind of move on from that because it's been that's taken up quite a bit of time. I think about three episodes or so. Um, and then you know the next episode will come back and I should have a good portion of this finished. Um, if not, you know maybe some of the minor details will be finished. All we need to be finished. Uh, the grave or the cemetery area will probably be worked on but we're gonna need to start working on a new project and I'm not really sure hello what I'm gonna want that to be um, actually I think I do know uh, I'm gonna do some <laughs> I'm gonna go back and start doing some upgrades oh no, no no I lied so there's one thing that I want to do with the cow farm and I'll get into that in a further episode whenever that comes um, so that's gonna change a little bit not necessarily the building but um, how it works uh, the villager situation is okay we're not getting a ton of, of villagers yet but what I do want to do is I need to get an iron farm going really bad <laughs> um, and so I think that I'm gonna want to see if I can try to figure out how to get it out here uh, and the reason being is because uh, if I can get the iron farm in this general area it will not only produce me iron but it will also double as additional spawning um, in this area so uh, the villagers in themselves will cause uh, zombie spawning up top um, and you know the zombie spawning will do two things it will obviously increase my zombie drops boop um, but it'll also help push some of the other mobs uh, along the way so because you know they spawn up there but they don't necessarily move but if a zombie lacks on to a, a villager it will want to move and if it's behind something it will push something so that's my hope <laughs> uh, we'll see but uh, you know that's that's the um, the relative gist um, I'm also gonna want to really kind of solidify some of these farms because uh, you know I have this giant area Ooh, that scared me for a second I thought it was opening I have this giant area oops sorry cheap that I have just random sheep in, but I'm going to want to actually have a legitimate sheep farm um, with pens for specific colors um, so that I can kind of organize everything because this is kind of random, right? Um, but a lot of that's going to come with more grass. So this is kind of a future project um, as things go. So, all right, so I have all this room out here. So I'll end up expanding everything this way, which is okay because I have more stone. And I apologize for that last little bit of, uh, of, uh, derpiness with this because I don't know why that's not coming in so when we come back we will have a finished church of Brindy Low we will begin working on some other projects of course um, to be determined based on necessity and time and uh, and from there you know again that's it so uh, if you liked this episode uh, you know you had a fun time watching you know, me work on this, enjoyed the fact that I added that, thank you, um, then please leave a like, subscribe, and comment, uh, leave a comment, and, uh, and tell me how you liked it, so, or what you didn't like, quite frankly, that works either way, um, but until next time, guys, uh, we will see you then, Bye bye. <laughs>